Hey everyone, welcome to the first official day of seventh grade math. Um, today we're going to be taking notes. So if you do not have a notebook or paper um, with your binder and then a pencil, pause this video now and go grab that. To easily pause the video, you can press the space bar at any time. So today we're talking about integers and absolute values. This is section 1.1. So that means that we're in chapter one and we're in lesson one. This is gonna be your title, so write it at the top of your paper. I'm going to ask you to be taking pictures of your notes so I can make sure that you do them. So make sure that you take good notes throughout this. The first thing that we're gonna talk about is vocabulary. The first vocabulary word that we need to cover is whole numbers. Whole numbers are going to be your counting numbers. So one, two, three, four, so on and so forth. Now that we understand what whole numbers are, we can understand integers. Integers are whole numbers or counting numbers and they're negatives. So it goes all the way back to negative infinity negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and then all the way to infinity on the other side. Our last vocabulary word is absolute value. Absolute value is the distance between a number and 0. So the absolute value of A is going to be written as those two lines on either side of an A. We're going to start off with a word problem because I think that this really helps you understand absolute value a little bit better. So it says the freezing point is the temperature where a liquid becomes a solid. Is the freezing point of mercury or butter closer to the freezing point of water, which is going to be zero degrees Celsius? The first thing that we need to think about is what is the information that I need to know to complete this problem. I know that I need to know what the freezing point of mercury is and what the freezing point of butter is. Thankfully, they provided us with a table over here so we can look that up. The first thing I'm looking for is mercury. I find it down here and I know that the freezing point of mercury is negative 39 degrees Celsius. The second thing I need to know is what the freezing point of butter is. And that's right at the top of our table at 35 degrees Celsius. The rest of this information, the airplane fuel, the honey, and the candle wax don't matter. So I'm going to cross that out so I don't have to look at it. So I know that I'm going to be working with negative 39 and positive 35. And our number given up here, which is zero. The question is, which one is closer to the freezing point of water? The way that I'm gonna be able to visualize this is by using a number line. So I'm gonna draw the number line out here. I'm lazy, I don't wanna draw out 39 tick marks on one side and 35 tick marks on the other side. So how I'm going to represent this is I'm going to draw three tick marks. My middle tick mark is going to be my zero. I know that all my negative numbers are to the left. So I'm going to put 39 to the left side of zero. And I know all my positive numbers are to the right. So I'm going to put 35 on the right side of zero. Now I'm going to think about what the actual question is. Which one is closer to zero? I know that 39 to zero or negative 39 to zero is going to be 39 tick marks. On the other side, I'm looking at 35 to zero or what butter is to zero. And I know that's going to be 35 tick marks. So my options are 35 tick marks to get to butter or 39 tick marks to get to mercury. 
I know that 35 is less than 39, so I know that butter is going to have a closer freezing point to water. So I'm going to write butter up here because I know that's my answer. What you just did is absolute value. Absolute value is that distance from zero. So how far away the number is from zero. So if I ask you what the absolute value of 40 is, you're going to tell me that it's 40. If I ask you what the absolute value of negative 40 is, that answer is still 40. The easy way to think about this is just make whatever number is inside a positive number. Whatever is inside that is going to be positive every single time. So if I ask you what the absolute value of negative pizza is, you're going to say pizza. If I ask you what the absolute value of 102 is, you're going to tell me 102. So, we just thought about this a little bit. If I'm asking you what the absolute value of 2 is, again, it's that distance from 0. Using a number line, I would put a dot at 2, and I'm thinking about the absolute value of 0, or of 2 from 0, so I'm going to put a dot at 0 as well. I know that 2 is 2 tick marks away, so I know that the absolute value of 2 is 2, and that's going to be my answer for this one. This next one is asking what the absolute value of negative 3 is. So you're going to put a dot at negative 3, a dot at 0, and count how far away negative 3 is from 0. I know that I have to jump 3 tick marks, so I know that the absolute value of negative 3 is going to be 3, and that's my answer. If you don't understand what I'm doing, please pause the video and go email me now. Now we have your turn problems. I want you to pause the video, copy down all four of these problems, and then solve them yourself. Once you're done solving, start the video again, and I'm going to have the answers for you. Double check your work. If you missed a lot of them, Take a minute, email me after this. So pause the video now. So here are your answers. For number one, you should have gotten seven. Number two is one. Number four is 14. For number three, you might have been a little bit confused because we had that negative sign outside of our absolute value. The actual answer is negative 5, and I'm going to tell you why over here. So this is our original problem. We've got negative absolute value of negative 5. How I'm going to look at that is I'm going to take away that negative and just kind of push it to the side by adding a 1 in front of it or behind it. And so we've got negative 1 times the absolute value of negative 5. If you remember back to sixth grade when you learned about the distributive property, you might have seen a problem like this one. So you had a negative on the outside of the parentheses. In order to distribute that out, you had to add a 1 in front of those parentheses. You're doing the same exact thing here. It's just with an absolute value symbol instead of a parentheses. So from this part right here, we're going to solve the absolute value of negative 5 
we're smart, we know that the absolute value of negative five is five, and I brought down my times negative one. I know that negative one times five is going to give me a negative five, and that's gonna be my answer. Now we're gonna be comparing values. So when we're comparing values, we're going to use one of three symbols. The first symbol is pretty easy. It's just an equal sign. We've been using that a lot. So that means that the value on the left is equal to the value on the right, like two equals two, or negative seven equals negative seven. It's the same exact thing on both sides. The second and third symbols that we're going to be using look like this. You have used these for a couple of years now, but it's always something that seventh graders seem to forget about before this lesson. So this symbol right here is called a less than symbol. And this symbol right here is a greater than symbol. This one's less than and this one's greater than because whenever we read, we always read from left to right. It doesn't matter if it's in English or if it's in math, it's always going to be less than left to right. So for example, if I have a two and a three, I would say two is less than three. So that's the symbol that we're going to be using. That left side is smaller and that right side is bigger. So you can play a matching game and match up the symbol with the number. So going back to this problem right here, when we're comparing one and the absolute value of negative four, before I can even think about which symbol to use, I have to make sure that both numbers are simplified down to as far as they will go. Looking at this one, that's all it is. So I know that the one is simplified as far down as it can go. However, the absolute value of negative four, there's something that I can do there. I can actually find the absolute value of negative four. The absolute value of negative four is going to be four. So when I'm looking at those two numbers, one and positive four, I need to determine which one's bigger. So looking at the number line, it makes it a lot easier. I can definitely see that four is greater than one. So that means from left to right, one is less than four. And that's gonna be my answer for this one. I'm gonna do one more problem with you. This is comparing the absolute value of five and the absolute value of negative five. First, before I use any of my three symbols, I have to make sure that both numbers are simplified as far down as they can go. I'm looking at the absolute value of five right here. The absolute value of five is not simplified. I need to simplify it still. I know that the absolute value of five is going to give me a five. Next, I have the absolute value of negative five. I know that the absolute value of negative five is five. So the two numbers I'm looking at are five and five. Both of those numbers are at the same place, which means they are equivalent or equal to each other. So my answer to this problem is five equals five. Again, pause this video at this time if you are confused about the comparing values section of these notes. If you are ready to move on, you can start working through these problems. Pause the video now. Here are the answers. So over here is going to be my work and my simplification. 
and then this is my answer. So I know that the absolute value of negative 2 turns into a 2. So I'm comparing the values 2 and 1. 2 is greater than 1, so I'm going to have a greater than symbol. Number 2 is less than, and number 3 is equal to. Now you can start working through your homework. You're going to turn your textbook to page 6 and 7. They are right next to each other. And do these numbers. These are going to be due on Friday. However, you should be working on them today because when we have our Zoom tomorrow, you're going to be able to ask me questions. So if there's a problem that you don't understand or you need some clarification on, you can ask me during that Zoom meeting. Like it says at the top, please get a new sheet of paper for this. So you can do this on a sheet of lined notebook paper. Again, you're going to be taking a picture of all of your work. So make sure that you actually copy down the problem. You do not have to write down every single word in a word problem. That's going to be a waste of your time. But when you have, for example, the absolute value of negative 9, I want you to write out the absolute value of negative 9 equals 9. If you have any questions, please email me or save them for the Zoom tomorrow.